So once we are navigating around quite a bit, uh, we will make a lot of changes. And as you go through your development cycle, you're going to need to refactor. And I think Matt brought up one of the refactorings. Well, we have a whole menu full of refactoring goodness, and it's all context specific depending on what you're doing. Uh, so I, of course, renaming refactor. That's something we're doing all the time because naming is hard, right? We name something, ah, was not right. We need to rename it. Uh, so that happens all of the time. Um, so it's the same thing, control shift R, but then I would pick rename and as Matt shown, it would be um, a little pop-up to give you a safe rename so you can preview it and make sure you're not going to completely waste something. Uh, so I could do that, makes it nice and easy. And then just let it go and it does the rename for me. Uh, some other things that I could do as well, this renaming is taking a bit. There we go. Okay. It was looking around for the code that is not there because there's not really a lot with the instructor object. Um, but after we rename things, we might need to move stuff around, particularly if you're building an object model. So if I look at, say, the code in my student, ah, sure, this looks fine. But when I come down here in the student.cs file, having this degree type, eh, I mean, it's related to a student in that they're going to have a type of degree, but um, maybe it's better off in its own file uh, or in a file with a degree object or something like that. A lot of folks stick to one class or enum or struct or whatever per file. That really depends on your own standards and how you code. But either way, I could do a control shift R and I could say move to another file just by placing my cursor there on that enum. When I do that, it hints, well, I think you probably want to call it degree type CS. Yes. yes, I do, thank you. And just let it do that. And then boom, moves it right over, adds the namespace in and everything. And you might have caught it before, but if you decide to move, you can just tell it to move it to another namespace or out to a different folder as well. Uh, and as well as renaming, there's a safe delete too. A uh, safe delete is the best because A, deleting code is the best. And then B, when you get to delete stuff and, it, and then it's just deleting code is awesome. So when you delete it and there's no problems, that's pretty great. So those kind of uh, patterns that we use every day are quite helpful with Control Shift R, which takes us to our refactor this. Uh, some other things that we might do is um, here if I have uh, an instructor class that inherits from a staff class. Well, if I take a look and do my control click and navigate to staff, I could see, well, there's a title for employees and staff of the college. Uh, but if I go back to instructor, hmm, Staff probably could use the departments as well because they're all tied to a department, but they might not all teach courses, so they might not all have a list of courses with them. So I could do something like a control shift R and say, you know what, since staff or since instructor inherits from staff, I think I'm just going to pull these members up and stick them in with the instructor. So I could do something like that and tell it like, hey, go go up there, all right, and just do a next and stick them in the other um, the other object. So that's pretty nice that I can move things up and down that way. Uh, something else I might do with refactoring, big methods. And this is not the biggest method ever, ever just calculating a grade. However, uh, anytime that we're working with a block of code, we need to extract methods. So in this case, this is not exactly dry code. It's doing a couple of similar things that can be broken out. So, uh, or actually not single responsibility. So what I might want to do here is just uh, take this part where it determines the letter grade, and I might want to refactor that out and extract the method. And you'll notice when I highlight a whole block of code and I do Control Shift R, the extract method 
is what pops up because writer recognizes that that's probably what I want to do. And yes, it is. Thanks. So I will extract that method. And I can also do local function, which will nest it inside of this class. Uh, but I'll just do extract method. And it gives you a nice little preview down here of what it's going to look like. So it's going to create a new method. And uh, I could call it calculate letter grade. And I could even set the return type of what it might look like. And then here gives me what the code looks like. Nice little preview. And do a next. And then uh, boom, here it's in its own little method. So a lot of good stuff here with the refactoring.